Okay, folks, so let's take a look at this article in CNN in detail. Uh, this article is um, published on, uh, uh, let's see what's going on here. To take it out of full screen mode here real quick. Um, let's see here. Okay, so the article in specific detail is called uh it's definitely a crisis this is the reality for kids caught up in dc's violent crime spike by gabe cohen cnn published 9 a.m est saturday february 17th 2024 so i'm going to read i want to read this article into this video and then talk just about the thing about this video i think is just simply um not being seen okay and uh that these that that is not mentioned in this video that is a major factor in i'm sorry in this article it is a major factor in this article before you even start talking about the larger national issues cultural racial you know whatever before you get to those to those problems there is a, another problem that is just not being seen or talked about or dealt with that plays a significant factor in this whole issue. And I'm gonna to try to read through it as fast as I can to get through this. So let's start off with um, the actual uh, images that I have here, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and I'm gonna just try to keep to the script of the, the article. Um, it's definitely a crisis. This is the reality for kids caught up in DC's violent crime spike, okay? Uh, Washington, D.C. CNN on a recent Tuesday morning guards escort Malcolm, 17 year old from D.C., uh, no race given or ethnicity, uh, into a circuit courtroom where he'll soon be sentenced for attempted robbery as he walks to his seat slumped and handcuffed in a jail jumpsuit with a exhausted look on his face. He gives a subtle nod to five boys in the gallery, his friends who have come to witness his fate. Okay, let's pray for Malcolm, says the adult, one adult champ, chaperone in the teens as she reaches for their hands. They bow their heads. She asks the Lord for a lenient sentence. The 14-year-old boy beside her will, uh, keeps his eyes open through the prayer, blankly staring down. As the hearing gets underway, he quietly voices his discomfort and fear for his friend. Okay, I don't want to be here, he says. This is real. Now, first of all, <clears throat> Let me tell you something. If I was in this situation, I would never have my friends there. If I had any friends to have at that point in time in my life, I would not have them in court to watch me get sentenced for a crime. Okay. That's just a matter of personal uh, shame. You know, I don't, I wouldn't want to share that with anybody in my, in my friends or family, you know? Yeah. I know there's issues of uh, being, you know, held pending bail or released on my own recognizance pending bail. If you want a, a lawyer, yes, you definitely want, but I wouldn't want any of my friends or family see me there having this happen. This, this has happened to me. I will say this, not quite for the same crime, but this has happened to me. And um, my um, mother was there at sentencing. And uh, I didn't know she was there. I hadn't even had a chance to talk to her before because I was in, in the jail um, the whole weekend. And then I had a trial come up. And uh, I didn't say anything to her about it at all, honestly. Not a word. Uh, but somehow she knew and um, she showed up there. And I didn't know she was coming. And um, they released me on my own recognizance. And um, she gave me a ride home. We didn't say a word. I was so embarrassed about the entire situation that I'd gotten involved in. Uh, it really was a situation almost beyond my control, to be honest. But man, I'll tell you, the last thing I want to do is talk to my family about that. It, I was so embarrassed about it. Much less have a support group come there and a bunch of kids watching that I knew of my school. You know, just not, not even an equation. So I want to, again, keep this to a minimum. So I have a lot to say about this afterwards, so we'll get to it after we get finished with this.
It's already enough as it is. Seeing the consequences of crime was the goal of Marcellus Queen, who has been mentoring the teens since another friend of theirs was shot and killed last year. He encouraged them to attend the hearing. I want them to understand that the playing is over, that they're trying to hold you accountable. Adding that the teens have questions about why their friend is being charged as an adult and not allowed to go home. All right, so there's Marcellus Queen. Says much earlier support and intervention is needed to stop children before they commit crimes. Queen sits behind the boys, occasionally clarifying what's happening in the court proceeding. Malcolm previously pleaded guilty to attempted robbery after facing charges for the attempted armed carjacking of a plainclothes police officer, according to his attorney and his mother. Now, um, this doesn't have to happen in real time. They could basically make a, a video or something about this and show it to these kids in school. They don't need to be taking time off from, from school, going down a courtroom and sitting there and watching all this happen. Um, Malcolm's lawyer asked the judge to move the case to juvenile court since he was 16. When he committed the crime, the judge, torn by the severity of the offense, eventually grants the request, which I can guarantee you is not going to happen in almost any other case with a 16-year-old and a gun and a carjacking. They're not going to juvie. Um, Malcolm will serve out his sentence in a juvenile facility. His very, very lucky young man. Um, his mother tells CNN she doesn't know how long he'll be incarcerated. Um, it's a gun felony in DC. He's gonna do at least five years, one way or another, okay? Um, after the hearing, Malcolm's friends, raging in age from 13 to 16, huddle outside the courthouse. Jail is not a game, one of them says. You have to put your big boy pants on when it comes to stuff like that. It's ironic that he says that, because uh, someone's gonna take his pants off one way or the other. Um, a youth crime emergency. Fear has been growing in the nation's capital amid a violent crime surge up 39% last year, and many kids are caught up in it. Yes, many kids are caught up in it. Um, this is why I'm reading this. I want you to, to understand we're going to talk about why these kids are caught up in it before we even go anywhere else. Uh, data shows juveniles make up the majority of arrests in D.C. for crimes like robbery and carjacking. For carjackings, which nearly doubled in 2023, the average age of those arrested was 15 years old. These are kids in their freshman or second year in high school doing this on average. That means there are kids in 13, 14 range, maybe even 12, out there carjacking people in DC. We, the, 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 what, the reason why that's happening is a huge issue, which is not even touched on in this article. Uh, guns are used in about half of carjackings police data show. Uh, what do they do for non-gun carjackings? I'll just show up and tell me to get out of the car. Uh, city officials have faced widespread criticism for the alarming crime numbers as well as a drop in arrests and prosecutions. Ironic. Uh, some argue that many defendants, including juveniles, have received a slap on the wrist after committing serious offenses. Undoubtedly, they have. Uh, in many months, city leaders have turned to some tough on crime measures to address the crisis. D.C. City Council ad, uh, advanced a wide-ranging anti-crime bill earlier this month with tough measures, including extending pretrial detention of children accused of various crimes. Now, this is a, a, one of the major points about this. Calling these people children. They're not children, okay? They are young adults in terms of physiology. A lot of these kids, 13, 14 years old, they're already... 185, 200, 250, okay? Grown, grown ass kids by the time they get to be 15, 16 years old and bigger than most of the adults that they come across in life and not worried about what these adults think about them. And they're just a little bit too big for parents or, or someone in a pretrial program or something like that to be, to be dealing with. These kids beat the fuck out of you in a heartbeat and they know it if they want to. So talking about calling them children is part of this whole oxymoron where they're far more than big enough to deal with most adults, but they're not old enough to be considered adults mentally. And this is where the real problem comes in. Get, again, get to that in a little bit. 
The bill will also expand the definition of carjacking, which has already become a high profile issue, particularly considering following the deaths of two victims this year. Now, I didn't know that they were talking about changing the definition of carjacking. I mean, carjacking is pretty straightforward, basically robbing somebody of their car. But if they're going to change the definition, that's a, another issue. I don't even want to get into that now. It's just not the, the point here for me. Um, all right. Um, it, Washington Mayor Muriel Bowser at the podium announced new public safety measures at the wake of the rise in carjackings. Not necessary, but we'll get to that. I'm trying not to comment on this line by line. It follows the declaration last year by the district's mayor of a juvenile crime emergency. Okay, that we know well about. Um, they've had um, curfews in DC, curfews in Virginia, Alexandria, Arlington, uh, Loudoun, PG County, Montgomery County for at least 15 years now um, behind the juvenile crime uh, wave that, that's been going on. Um, let's see, DC police are expected to open a new multi-agency real-time crime center in the coming weeks. But seeing it found some teenagers in the nation's capital don't seem to think that committing violent crimes like carjacking is a big deal for them or for their peers. And technically for them, it is, but they don't see why that is, okay? We'll get to that. As they think they're, all they're doing is getting the car and driving the car around, said one 15-year-old who will call Eddie to protect his identity. That's a lot like people saying that these illegal immigrants are coming into this country just to work, okay? Then, <laughs> no, sir, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, uh, they don't see the impact they do to other people who get hurt. You might scare people when you jack somebody for their car. I would say, yeah, you're probably going to scare the shit out of somebody when you stick a gun in their face and tell them to give you the keys and get out of their car. Um, Eddie tells CNN he was shot in the leg last year during an altercation in which his friend was killed. He's in his school, another pervasive problem for kids in D.C. Eddie is one of the teens Queens is trying to keep off the street and out of trouble. He says he organizes activities and events for the boys pulling in what resources and fueling funding he can from others in the community. I was a troubled youth. I spent time in juvenile detention centers, federal correction facilities. I've been shot before, Queen told CNN. I want them to have a little bit of a notice ahead of time. This is how it works. So let me avoid this because it's not a game. That is part of the problem right there, is they do see it as a game, okay? They do indeed see it as a game. This is the tendency of black youth in general to see anything involving violence as a game, not something serious until somebody gets killed or their skull crushed or they're crippled or something that they can't just walk away from and it is the minor issue. Just about anything that happens that involves violence is a game to black youth, to a lot of youth, not just black youth, but seriously. That's the problem with kids in general. They don't see it as serious until someone gets seriously fucked up. Queen says the problems typically begin well before kids start stealing cars and intervention has to begin earlier too when children are missing school or their families don't have enough support or resources. The kids are going to miss school. They're going to lack resources and support because that is the environment that the kids are being raised in. It is definitely a crisis. You've never seen 12 year olds do the things that they do. So you've never looked at it if you've never seen it. It's been happening for a long time. Support is needed, jail is not. And that right there is the crux of the argument. By keeping these kids out of jail, they are giving the rest of the country the impression that they are just hiding and covering for these kids and they're not getting the proper punishment they should be getting. Whereas if you were in any other Houston, uh, Dallas, uh, Kansas City, uh, Minnesota, I don't know about Chicago, but certainly um, any of these red states, these kids would be going to jail, Georgia, South Carolina, um, they would be in JV, no questions asked. You could talk about all the programs you wanna talk about along with that, but they're going to jail. This is the whole issue, is the, the crux of this article is that they're trying to keep these kids from going to jail and everybody looking at the situation and saying, that's exactly where you're making a mistake. You need to put these kids in lockup. 
They need to be locked up. That's the problem. For a, a variety of reasons, a long variety of reasons. And then you have the issues that they're going in New York and in other states where kids are getting locked up to keep them out of the streets, carjacking people and robbing people and raping people. And so you've, we've, got, we've developed this giant dichotomy between the way people think these kids should be treated and the way these mentors, quote unquote, think they should be treated. But there is another constituency here that's not being represented in this article. And that is the older kids and the gang leaders who think that what's going on with these kids is just perfect for them, that they're learning how life really is and they're primed to join street gangs. They're primed to issue street justice, that this is exactly what they want to see. Okay. The kids also have to deal with the simple fact that their adults aren't the ones telling them what to do just by themselves. It's the older kids telling them what to do. And the older kids will beat the shit out of these kids to get them to do what they want. And half the problem these kids have is they just are just trying to stay alive. They're just trying not to get their ass beat that day, not to get knocked out and robbed that day. They're going through this on a daily basis. And these, these uh, counselors and so forth are never going to be violent with these kids. They can only do so much with them without being violent. That's half the problem. So, um, intervening early. Okay. Uh, where are we here? Curtis brothers, formerly incarcerated man who now volunteers as a violence interrupter, the Alliance of concerned men trying to keep the streets of Southeast DC calm says the overloaded juvenile justice system is part of the problem. Yeah. Cause they don't have space for these kids to go there. Yes. I agree with that. He argues that sentences are too lenient and many youths don't believe they will get locked up for even serious crimes. Completely agree with that. They believe they're not going to jail. The jail system is so overcrowded that you can't almost have to catch a couple of murders just to do a couple of months. It speaks for itself. Um, Brothers is tasked with mandating safe passage for students on the street outside of a DC middle school so they can get to and from classes safely. They get beat up in the school. Okay. <laughs> get beat up on the way to school. They'll get beat up in the school. They get beat up after school. Getting them to and from class is just part of the problem. Um, let's see. Uh, this is the most vulnerable age, he says about the middle schoolers. That's not true. The most vulnerable age is when they're six and eight and 10 years old, not when they're 13 or 15. Once you get over 13, your mind is pretty much made up. You feel like you know everything. Once they get to high school, it's probably over. Very violence interventions are increasingly geared towards even younger kids. The group runs a conflict resolution class for kids as young as five with a goal to break the cycle, helping the kids become role models and community change agents by the time they're teenagers. And they are already role models and community change agents by the time they're teenagers. These kids are already in gangs by the time they're 10, 12, 13 years old, being led by older kids with a similar background to these mentors who are just teaching them a different message that you've got to be a badass to be safe when you get to be 15 year old. Okay. And, and a lot of these kids have what it takes to institute discipline in these kids in school. That is not the kind of discipline that guys like Curtis brothers want to teach them. Um, I, let's see, where was I? Down the hall from the class, CNN sat down with two teens who work with ACM. We're calling them Dion and Steve to protect their identity to discuss why these kids are committing these crimes, also known as crashing out. Dion, 16, and Steve, 17, have both been previously incarcerated for robbery and gun charges. Both were court mandated to work with ACM, mentoring other kids on conflict resolution, though Steve recently completed his obligation and has continued to work voluntarily. Let's just hear this story. A lot of people crash out because they don't have the right guidance, they don't get mentors, they don't have anybody to talk to. Everyone is getting fast paced. They scroll on their phone. They see you did this. You stole a car and that's going to influence them. And I'm like, I'm hungry. I don't have any clothes. My brother's locked up. My mother's not doing anything for me. So let me go do this. They're among the many who argue that DC cannot just arrest and prosecute its way out of this crisis. The district is still experiencing hyper gentrification and stark pockets of poverty 
made worse by the weight of the recent extreme inflation on struggling families, plus social media and its pressure to keep up with peers in many cases add a toxic layer to the vulnerable kids' lives. Now, I need to go back here and pull this up because there's a point here that they're skipping. That's a very important point. The juvenile system is overcrowded, so you almost have to catch a couple of murders to just to do a couple of months in even JB. Um, Brothers is tasked with maintaining safe passage for students on the street outside of a DC middle school so they can get to and from class safely. safely. Uh, Curtis Brothers now works as to prevent uh, violence on the same streets where as a young man he's opened fire on DC police. Okay, there he is right there. Guy shot at the cops sitting right there in the street. This is a side issue which I think shouldn't be overlooked either. Is that um, these kids are committing gun crimes, okay, and not going to JV even, much less an adult court. Now, normally, gun crimes would tack on five years to anything, any sentence, okay? Then there's having the gun in the first place, which is a federal crime in D.C., okay, which is a mandatory five-year sentence in and of itself, okay? Then if you aren't even supposed to have a gun, which means it's a legal carry, that's another five years, okay? Um, now, I know there's some, been some changes in D.C. gun law recently um, behind um, the ruling that the, the previous law up to, say, 2010 or 2020, sorry, 2020, was, a, was unconstitutional and too restrictive, but that doesn't mean that you go walk around D.C. carrying a gun. That's a different story. You still need to have a concealed carry permit to do that, and it is seriously difficult to get a concealed carry permit in D.C. Uh, Maryland just made it slightly easier. It's pretty much been impossible for minorities to get concealed CCW permits in Maryland for like the existence of the, the country. Um, Hogan made some changes in that regard. Uh, the Republicans in D.C. made some changes in that regard. But generally speaking, any kid with a gun in D.C. Is, is looking at 15 years of felonies alone, okay? Um, just for having a gun, much less carjacking somebody. So when you talk about murders to get two months in JV, <laughs> that just goes to say, say that the, the police and the criminal justice system in D.C. essentially does not exist for these kids, which is a huge part of the problem. There's no criminal prosecution for most crimes that kids commit, okay? Much less going to, to adult court. And if they can't even get in a JV because it's so full, just, then you, yeah, yeah, it's a slap on the wrist for just about everything. Um, where Curtis Brothers is on the picture. This is the most vulnerable age. It goes all the way down to another picture. Okay, so yeah, everything is fast paced. They scroll on their phone. They uh, see this, you did this, you did that. You know, that's gonna influence them. They're like, I'm hungry, I've got no clothes, my brother's locked up, etc." Washington, D.C. confronts the crime wave. Uh, they're among the many who argue that D.C. cannot just arrest and prosecute. So starting at uh, CNN, Samantha Gulf, this is the last page of the article. They're among the many who argue that D.C. cannot just arrest and prosecute its way out of this crisis. The district is still experiencing hypergentrification and stark pockets of poverty made worse by the weight of recent extreme inflation on struggling families. Plus, social media and its pressure to keep up with peers in many cases has added a toxic layer to vulnerable kids' lives. I will get to this in a minute. Um, they, if they intervene way before the point of crashing out, then it would never happen. Debatable. All depends on what you mean by intervene, <laughs> okay? Uh, Queen says, every single case of a child facing criminal charges, you see 100 days, missing school, no food in the household. Why does it take something so major to see, oh, we're failing our kids? You might want to think about that statement a little bit more before you start going around saying it, okay? I don't think it's a question of it taking something so major to see that. I think people have seen that for a long time, and the point is it's just gotten that bad before you started taking it seriously. Um, referring to the calls 
to increase incarceration for teens, he says, and the saddest thing about it is they're willing to throw away our kids, uh, to throw our kids away instead of fix our families. Okay. So, um, there are several things wrong with this, this article, um, which is mostly just writing down what people think. This, they, they have done a good job of restraining themselves from making this an opinion piece. It's, more, it's much more of just a, in, an investigation into what the people involved in the situation think about the situation they're involved in. And I commend CNN for, for not you know, putting Tucker Carlson on this, okay? But I think it's important that minorities look at this in a realistic manner, okay? Um, first of all, as, as the guy said, part of the problem is that they're not seeing serious punishment, okay? Um, however, that's a much larger issue, but, but yes, it, it's important if you're going to have kids commit felonies, violent felonies in your jurisdiction, that they actually have a opportunity to do felony time. Yes, that is a major issue. Now, part of the reason that they're not able to put these kids in felony, in, in, in JV or much less adult jail, is because they've run out of space in JV and adult jail, which is what they call a crime wave and all this kind of stuff, okay? And yes, that's the problem, okay? But this should have been seen long before it happened. DC jail has been overcrowded for decades, same problem. Um, they had to build a new facility out in Ohio. They built a new facility out in Ohio and they started putting kids in it that were being charged as adults. Then the parents started bitching because they had to go all the way out to Ohio to see the kids. They had to bring the, ki the kids from Ohio into DC for hearings. There's no question this has been a problem for a long time. The problem is it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And the reason is a lot of people see that this is a problem because these kids are going to JV, they're going to adult, and they're getting basically trained to be criminals, even worse, they come back to have zero chance of having um, a nonviolent future. You know, most of them are getting shot by the time they're 15, not to mention 20, 25. They get into gangs, they start doing drugs, they start doing hard crime, and they're never going to be um, uh, good mentors, okay? I, I don't consider people who've been to jail several times to be good mentors. They're just too far gone. Um, the worst thing that they do is show the kids that they can survive being criminals until they're 40 and still go out and find a decent job. Um, the, it's not necessarily that they should all be killed by the time they're 40, but I guarantee you that in DC, they're getting out a lot earlier than they would get out if they were being arrested, incarcerated in, in some of these Southern states, Alabama without question. Okay, they'd be lucky to even make it out of Alabama jail. Um, so, uh, Missouri, you know, you can, can, Mississippi, Louisiana, they would be in their 60s or 70s before they made it out on a carjacking crime uh, charge. And they wouldn't be plea, barking, plea bargaining crimes down to assault. You know, it just wouldn't happen. A lot of these kids would be lucky to even get arrested and make it to court in some of these southern states. Texas, Oklahoma, they don't catch you carjacking, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, they shoot you carjacking, okay? And this is the difference in between a lot of, a lot of these more hardcore states in, in Washington, D.C. It's a liberal establishment. The kids are getting off lightly to do this, but here's the other problem with it. Other states and other cities have the same crimes, same situation. They have kids that commit carjacking. They have kids that rob and, and assault and rape and, and burglarize. There's lots of, you go to, you know, go to all the way from Maryland, all the way from um, you know, uh, Hagerstown down to Roanoke in Virginia, down to Chesapeake, you know, on, on, the, on the Ocean City side. There's lots of kids out there committing crime, okay? So the, the district can't say that being poor and being envious of other people and having social media and all that stuff is an excuse. It's not an excuse. It's, not, it's no excuse at all. It's not, there's, no, there's no excuse in these things that are national problems. 
okay? You can't say this reason and that reason and this other reason is why kids in D.C. are leading the country in terms of carjacking. That's not an excuse. That's the problem. The, the problem is the District of Columbia is a special case because, number one, they don't want to seem like they, are, they have to deal with a lot of crimes there. Number two, there's a huge social distinction between Northwest, you know, and even um, uh, Southwest D.C., and then Northeast and Southeast D.C. These are, these are very different categories or parts of the city. And for decades, they've been seriously uh, segregated, virtually as much segregation as possible. These kids would go into these areas and almost immediately be scoped out and followed around by the police. They didn't, didn't have an opportunity to do shit because they would almost immediately get run out of these areas, okay? It's, it's the, the change from Northwest to Northeast, going across 16th Street, you know, North Capitol Street into Northwest, uh, North, sorry, Northeast, which is already enough trouble right there, going up to the Maryland border, going through Bladensburg and, and um, just all kinds of nonsense going up there, going up in the PG County. And then you go south in the, in the Southeast across the East Capitol Street, and that's just like, you know, the armpit. <laughs> I mean, like seriously, go out uh, on the green line into um, Anacostia. These are places you just do not want to go if you're white. You know, I'm telling you. And then when they talk about hyper gentrification, that's white people basically buying a property in these er in these high crime areas because of the cost of housing has gotten so high in the rest of the city, and the cost of housing is relatively low in in Anacostia and East Capitol Street and on out, you know, Bladensburg Road and stuff like that, and. Yes, hyper gentrification is a real issue because the the massive inflation of the cost of housing in D.C. has pushed its way right down into these very high crime, predominantly black areas. And yeah, these, these kids are, are seeing a lot of white people driving around in their cars and having nice jobs and wearing nice clothes and doing nice things in their neighborhood. And they think they're easy targets. That's the problem. That's where the real problem is. Okay. So what I'm saying is it's not just the economic and social incentives to commit crime. It's also the fact that these people are not blacks. They're not gangsters. They're not kids that grew up going to Coolidge or some kind of high school in the middle of the Southeast. They're, they're easy for the most part. They're, they're not a threat. And that's half the issue. If they, if they were a threat, if, if this was some, some guy who was a gangster and they go out and try to you know, carjack some gangster that they know down the street, that's when we have a different problem that I have um, borrowed some um, videos from YouTube to explore the consequences of those videos. But we're getting to the summary of that whole point is that they're just not seen as a serious threat. The kids that are, the people who are seen as a serious threat, they don't have to worry about getting carjacked. Okay? They don't have to worry about getting robbed. And the whole point is that all these kids from the age of 10 that are getting beat up in school, robbed in school because they're small, when I mean, they just are, you know, they don't want to get beat up anymore. That's part of the problem. And the question is, how are they getting through their young, younger years without getting their ass beat, without getting robbed, without getting sexually assaulted? without having their houses robbed or burned out or their parents shot because they're trying to protect the kids. How do they do that? Well, let me tell you something. For everything that you read in stories like these about these inner city areas, remember there are lots of other inner cities besides Chicago, Washington, D.C., um, Richmond that are predominantly white inner cities. Okay, a lot of areas is in this country where there are predominantly white and Latino inner cities, um, and they don't have a lot of these problems that you see in black cities. So you can't use the economic, the social issues as an excuse for not putting these kids in jail, okay? It has to be a race neutral analysis, not one based on, oh, they're black kids, they're having problems because that becomes a situation where it's black kids are problems. And that's where the real problem is. Ooh, lower your weapon slowly. Drop the weapon now. What the fuck you do? You're supposed to be watching the door. Sir, is there anyone else in the store with you? 
No, I'm working alone, so I triggered the silent alarm. You already triggered the alarm? Yeah. I wish you hadn't done that. Shoot this motherfucker. How many times have I told y'all not to do a job without a plan? If I wanted to be somebody's mama, I'd have had kids of my own. Let me explain, yo. I was just... I got this. Get the fuck out of here. Dumb motherfucker. You made me do this shit to you. Call 41805. We got a 1013. Shots fired at 1462 Alabama Ave, Southeast. Officer involved shooting. Two victims down. Officer Laverne Ganner shot and killed the suspect.